You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Big Tips Texas After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Big Tips Texas After Show. But I'd been forgotten, I'd go. I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? But I'd been forgotten, I'd go. I'd been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cotton Eye Joe? like the redneck fist pump would be you know i know it's got to be different right <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well welcome everybody we are in episode 11 of mtv's big tips texas it is definitely big in texas we are loving this season there's so much drama going on and we're actually i feel like getting more into the characters as we keep going through the season which yeah. is nice um and it's getting more geared towards certain people yeah. I should say. The in, we're invested in these relationships we heavily are, at this point. Especially the relationships. Yeah. Um, so we do have a special guest caller on the line. Tonight it is Tiffany Morgan, your manager from Redneck Heaven. Tiffany, introduce yourself to all your fans out there. Hi there, it's Tiffany from Big Tips, Texas. I'm so excited to be on AfterBuzz. Aw, well, we're excited Yay! to have you. So excited. Yeah, we're on time. We're yes. in uniform. Yes. Uh, you don't have to do any checks. Uh, nothing's hanging out here. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and I appreciate it. That's a relief. Sure. Good thing. Perfect. And, and we're not going to kill each other either. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can't. We're far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Gabrielle Loren, your host, you guys, tonight. Joined alongside me is... Jen LaFort. And Scott Narver. Perfect. So let's get right into it. Tiffany, we love that you're on this show. You're one of our favorites for sure. Hands down. Hands mm -hmm. down. Um, so oh, thank you so much. What we're interested in knowing is how did the reality show come about? How did you guys get involved with MTV? You know, it's actually it's a really interesting story. Teens and I always thought that these girls would be interesting because it's that crazy. These girls have so many big, big personalities. And then I met Ross Breitenbach, who is our executive producer, and he and I did just a, like, a little flip cam video of a couple of the girls and really decided that this could work and full steam ahead, pitched it. Um, MTV loved the idea, and that was a little over a year ago, and then here we are, 11 episodes into our first season. Wow, that was only a little under a year ago or over a year ago? Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. It wow. What a so fast timeline. Um, so now was this, this was then before the controversy at the bar then with all the body painting? Yes. Body paint controversy happened just this last summer. So it was while we were filming. Wow. Okay. That's really awesome. Yeah. Well, good for you that you guys kind of manned that down. So it was pretty much you and Tinker that put it out there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Very cool. Do you guys have any like opening questions? Oh, yeah. Tinker says hi. He's sitting here next to me. Oh, he, oh, is. he is. Hi, Tinker. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Scott and I love your house, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. We got that orange off the walls. Don't you worry. You did? Magic eraser. That was hysterical. <laughs> that line, I, it was so funny because I, I felt his pain. So <laughs> did he make an executive decision to not really feature himself too much on the show? Or how is that working out? Because I know we only see him in snippets every now and then. You know, and it's, there is quite a few hours that go into filming every single episode, and then it's edited down to 22 minutes. Tinker, honestly, was so busy running the restaurants and just making sure that everything was going smoothly while these girls were running amok that he was in it just about as much as he could be while making sure that his restaurants were going as smooth as possible. Right. And so now watching it back, I'm sure you both are tuning into all the episodes. How do you guys feel about how you look on TV, how the show turned out? What are your thoughts? You know, we love it. It's it's interesting. It's been a very interesting experience, but <laughs> we really wanted to put it out there so that 
everybody could see Redneck Heaven and see how much fun it is and see what a fun-loving family we are and see the sisterhood. And I think that we've really done that. So I think it's been a great success. How has business been since the airing of the sh- these episodes? You know, we were really, really busy before. It's been steady and busy. And I think the only difference is that now more people from out of state are starting to reach out on Twitter and Facebook and social media and kind of ask us about it and want to know more about it. Wow. wow. And you guys have three restaurants? We do. We have three in the DFW Metroplex, one in Louisville, one in Arlington, and one in Fort Worth. So did all these girls work at the same restaurant, or did you have to kind of pull them from all of your different restaurants to make this awesome show? All of the girls kind of move around from restaurant to restaurant depending on where we need more girls, but they were all home-based in different restaurants originally. Okay. Do you consider, you know, Kristen or Morgan veterans now, or are they still kind of new girls to you guys? You know, I think that they have definitely gone a lot closer to earning their spot in the veteran circle. That's good. For sure. They've shown a lot more dedication. They've shown commitment, and I think that's really what matters the most. So now you came from being, you at one point were a redneck heaven girl and then moved up to management, correct? Yes, ma'am. I started out as a bartender and then I've been working on building the corporate office now for about two and a half years. Wow. Wow. Which the corporate corporate office is really uh, beautiful, by the way, from the past episode that we saw when you were interviewing with Mimi. I really like the colors that you chose for your office. (laughs) Jen. Thank you so much. I had so much fun decorating. Where is the office? Is it like a part of the restaurant or in a different building? No, actually our corporate office is right smack dab in the middle of the triangle of the three restaurants. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So it's an equal drive to all of them, but it's not attached to any of them. Tiffany, are there times when watching the show and going back and seeing that in certain moments that you may have been portrayed unfairly or that you being the boss, you have to make these decisions and then how they turn out on TV? Is there times when you feel like you, you could have been portrayed better or that you, you were right in the situation <laughs> and it's skewed differently? Oh, there have definitely been some absolutely cringeworthy moments on this show. <laughs> I've learned a lot about myself just from watching the show. And there, I mean, with, they say with reality shows, you know, editing is a thing. But in all reality, if you said those things, if you were that loud, if you cussed that much, it actually did happen no matter what happened before or after. And so watching those moments has really taught me a lot about how I react or how that could be viewed from somebody outside who isn't right up to the side of my head and understand exactly what's happening. Interesting. Would you say it's as catty off camera as it seems on camera? I'm sorry, say that again? Would you say it's as catty off camera as it seems on camera when we're watching the episode? Like, are the girls always arguing? Is there always some type of drama going on? No, I think that for the 22-minute episode, they really have to zoom in on those big moments. And so a lot of the calmer, funnier, sisterhood-ish moments, I don't really know how to put that, (laughs) those get left on the cutting room floor. Or if you watch MTV.com where they put our little snippets or on iTunes, there you see a lot more of the funny stuff where it's just comical and us just goofing around. But I think for the show, because they have such limited time, they really zoom in on those bigger dramatic moments. Wow. Was there anything specifically that stood out to you so far this season, like something really fun that you enjoyed shooting, I don't know, while you guys were doing your first season? You know, the car scene where Amber, Claire, myself blew up Ruby, my old car, was such an incredible scene to do. That was so fun. Honestly, I think the scenes that we had the most fun filming are yet to come. These last three episodes are really, really big. Hmm. It seemed like another standout moment would have been the camping trip, that that was really a successful venture, that bringing the girls together. Oh my goodness, how did I forget that? That seemed like (laughs) a real big turning point. (laughs) The camping trip was a blast. I love camping and then getting all of those girls out there and really seeing everyone drop their guard and come into it with an open heart and want to mend fences and stick the sisterhood was such a big moment for everybody. And I think that was really a turning point for all of us together was seeing that each of us 
had a point of view and we were all willing to accept each other's point of view and then come to an understanding with each other. Okay. It was, and there again, you missed, I mean, Amber went two o'clock in the morning hiking with a rope and a jug of water. There's so much stuff that didn't get put in there that is wow, just hilarious. That's too bad. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Could you ever show that episode to the five-star restaurant that you all went to to try and get back <laughs> in together as a group? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I'm never, ever going back there. <laughs> Did you guys That's actually mortifying. eat dinner or take out, you know, maybe the leftovers of what you weren't able to eat? Yeah. No, we got McDonald's later that night. <laughs> no <laughs> way. Well, we didn't even make that. it through our appetizers. That was honestly the boat scene and the restaurant scene are two of – my least favorite ones to watch because they they were two of the hardest to watch. They were really embarrassing. Well, do you still stand by your actions with the whole boat scenario of how, you know, you weren't okay with Kristen bringing her clothing to the boat when you guys were supposed to be promoting Redneck Heaven? Are you still, you still stand by that decision? I do still stand by that decision. Um, it wasn't shown, but I did have bathing suits that had Redneck Heaven on them for the girls. So my point of view on that was, if you're here to market Redneck Heaven, I need you to be 100% there for the company. If you want to come out and promote your own bathing suit, then by all means, come out and promote your own bathing suit on a different day later that afternoon. But when I'm out here, I'm paying you to promote my restaurant. I want your number one focus to be promoting the restaurant, not trying to get people to notice your bathing suit. See, this is why interviews are so important because right. nobody saw that. And if we'd seen that point of view yeah. without the editing, we would have probably taken your side on the matter. But we were kind of just confused because we were thinking, why isn't Tiffany branding them for promotions? So. No, absolutely. And I understand that. I, When people were upset with me after that episode, I really couldn't blame anybody based on what they solely saw in that episode. Can you tell you us what the redneck? You also that Tinker wore the redneck heaven bikini to try and get Chris and Morgan to put it on. No he way. Did. They refused. <laughs> yeah, oh, it that's too bad. I was going to ask you what it, what the the bikini looked like because I'm dying to know what it what it looks like. And we have red red white and blue bikinis that have redneck heaven embroidered on one red crest pieces and then across the bottom. Oh, cool! You should upload a picture. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see that. Especially with Tinker oh goodness, I will. <laughs> I will. I think that my marketing coordinator, Jenny, has them, so I will have her upload one ASAP. Oh, so Absolutely. Jenny's still in the picture? Yes, of course. She's doing a great job. She has really grown in the marketing coordinator role. Hmm. So any maybe prospects for Kristen? Do you think you'd ever hire her in the future? I do. I think that if I had a marketing position come up then, I think Kristen would be great, especially on social media. I don't know if you guys follow her at all, but she does a fabulous job of marketing TKCC. And I think if I ever had a position come open, now that I see where her loyalty lies, it'd be a much different story. Mm -hmm. Speaking of TKCC, I wanted to ask you about that. So in tonight's episode, we saw the launch um, at, what, I think it was Shoe Fly, some boutique. La -di -da. La -di -da. Oh, La -di -da. okay. Yeah. So the shoes, we were wondering, because... It looks like they were Tom's, and they just put, like, a white label over the the name. So we were curious, is she just decorating shoes for fun, or are these actual shoes that she ordered that just look like Tom's? We were just really confused by the launch. I think that she has it set up through the boutique. She's been hand-painting Tom's for over a year or so, custom-designed. And I think the way that it's set up through the boutique is you go into the boutique and you look through her catalog, and then you buy the toms from them, and she will hand paint whatever design you want on them for you. Oh, oh that's interesting. Cool. Yeah, we were wondering yeah, about that. Yeah, she some really great ones. Very cool. So, did you guys have fun at that launch since that was like one of the highlights of tonight's episode? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, <laughs> we did see Amber get thrown out, but it seemed for the most part like the beginning of the night might have been a little more enjoyable. It was a great launch party. I really, I think that Kristen did a great job. I think that it, I'm so proud of her for getting her line out there. Amber did get a little crazy, but I think that's kind of expected. Maybe <laughs> we should have been monitoring her triple fisting those drinks away from the bar. Oh. Um, but overall, it was a lot of fun. It was. I really like when we get a chance to get all of the girls together at once and just catch up with everybody. So those are always my favorite. Tiffany, can I ask you a question? How long have you and Tinker been together? We've been together just a little over three years now. 
Oh, wow. So I wanted October to bring something. October 15th is our anniversary. Oh, wow. so you just had that recent. Yes. October 15th. October 15th. Okay. So I had done some research when I first started watching <laughs> this show, and I saw on your Instagram there were pictures of a ring. Are you guys engaged? No, that's a funny story. It's a promise ring. Aww. I Aww. didn't want to live with anybody until I was engaged, but I didn't want to get engaged until I graduate from college. So our compromise was a promise ring, and I graduate from college next Saturday, so might be big things in the future. Wait a second. Oh, my God. Wait a second. That's awesome. First of all, congratulations. But second, how old are you? Are you, Like, you must be super young. I'm 24. Wow. Oh, my God. Well, good for you, girl. You're killing it. Manager, you, you have your own show. This is great. You might be marrying Batman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I think Tinker's Batman. <laughs> He's got a Batman house. Mm -hmm. We don't see him on the show that much. No. He's clearly marrying Batman. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I know. I'm marrying Batman. I love that. <laughs> so what's the general like age of the girls on the show? Are they all in their early 20s or some of them in their teens? Like, how, is it, how does that work? Um, Mimi's our youngest, and she's 19. And then Claire and I are a week apart, and we're both 24. So generally, it's from about 20 to 22, I think. Wow. That's awesome. And who's been there the longest? Claire. Claire, how many Claire years has she? Claire started about, I think, a year or so before me. Wow. Okay. She's been there almost since the day we opened. So, Tiffany, we had made a couple of predictions, or we make predictions after every show. And some of the ones I'm thinking right now we've talked about are we think somebody's going to get fired before the end of the season. Um, I think that Morgan and Chance are going to get engaged. And I can't think of another prediction that we had, but are any of these somewhat in the ballpark or um, do we have to keep? You know, a few of them are in the ballpark, but I think there are even bigger and better things than either of those that are going to happen in the next three episodes. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Who do they involve? Can you give us any spoiler? <laughs> um, let's see. Mimi, Amber, Morgan, and Kristen all have really big events coming up. Mm, all right. Wow. Okay. That's Tiffany, a good one. Thanks. Tiffany, <laughs> as you watch the show and you see the events that take place and, and what happens, do you think about a second season and other things to do with the girls or other outings or other big ideas that you have for the show? Honestly, right now I'm really just soaking up every moment of what's happening in this very first experience of season one. If we were blessed enough to get a season two I think that just having this many girls all together the events really start to come together naturally so it wouldn't take too much forethought or planning and then another thing there's a ton of castmates on this um now is that like a producer decision or did you guys decide you just wanted to show most of the girls that are working currently in the bar because I, I noticed, especially in the first few episodes, we probably were introduced to around, I don't know, 10 plus yeah. people. It's a lot of girls. Yeah. No, um, we have 10 official cast members that are Redneck girls. And that, that's a really big cast. I think that the goal was to have a person on the cast that every single person could relate to. There are 10 different girls and 10 different personalities with 10 different stories and goals and dreams. And so I think they really just wanted to have Redneck girl for everybody wow. to relate to. So now speaking of being relatable, uh, one of the characters we really took to was Sabrina because of a lot of her family issues. Now, are things getting better for her? Or like, how would you describe her current situation since filming season one? Sabrina is doing great. She's still an absolute workaholic. She is actually at work tonight. We were supposed to watch the show together at her apartment. And then she's like, oh, nope, I'm going to go to work. Surprise. Um, she is just chipping away at her dream. I mean, she wants to go to school, and I think that she will get back in school, but she's just really working and saving up money. And um, I have to say, in defense of everything, I love her mom. I've met her mom. Her mom is one of the most supportive people of this show and has done a lot for us. So I think that there will be a turning point for the audience to see that as well. Good. In this season, we're going to see that, you think? I hope so. I really do. But there are a lot of scenes, like if Sabrina filmed with her family and I wasn't there, I don't necessarily know everything that happened. 
Um, but I really, really hope that you guys do get to see the good side of her family that is supportive, not just of Sabrina, but of Redneck Happy and of all of us and everything. That's so awesome to hear because that was going to be my question I was going to ask you is what her family is like. And it sounds to me like you have a really positive outlook on them and that they've really, you know, been supportive of Sabrina. So I can't wait to see that. I really hope that it is in the next couple episodes. I do. Wow. So now is there anything, Tiffany, specifically you would like to let your fans know or anybody else out there? Maybe something about the episode, something you would like them to know about yourself? Just anything you just want to put out there to everybody? Oh, my goodness. I just want to thank all of them. I never could have imagined that this many people would be in interested in going on this journey with us and watching all of us go through all of these ups and downs. And that's just been unreal. We, Everyone has been so supportive and so positive. It's just so amazing. And I really, I mean, these next three episodes, I think they're going to be huge. So, it's so I hope that everybody tunes in to see what is probably going to be the biggest ending that you can imagine. Wow. Wow. You're I making it sound so like pumped. really awesome. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like anticipating what could it be? We actually missed the last <laughs> few, like probably the last minute of tonight's episode, just so we can like run in on this interview. We wouldn't be late, but I'm like oh dying goodness, to so see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what we're saying. We, we missed it. So, and you're just making everything sound juicy from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, last question of the night. Have you ever done a minnow shot? <laughs> I have done more minnow shots than I can count. Oh, my wow. God. So you have an aquarium inside of you right now. <laughs> I do. <laughs> what do they taste like? You don't taste them at all. Honestly, it's kind of like taking a really, really big vitamin. Where, where, just, wow. Where did it right come down. from? Where did the idea come from to do a minnow shot? Oh, my goodness. Can I put Tinker on the phone real quick and have yeah, you Yeah, that story? definitely. Yes. yes. Okay. Here's Tinker. Hey, Tinker. Hey, guys. Y'all doing all right? Hi, yes. Tinker. Hello, Batman. I know. Hello, <laughs> Batman. How are you? I'm, I'm delightful. How are you guys doing? <laughs> we're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> Good. We, we're uh, wondering about the origins of the minnow shot. Uh, oh, the minnow bomb. Yes. Uh, you know, that is one... Uh, late night out on the boat on Party Cove uh, with a whole bunch of drunk buddies just sitting around, and uh, somebody had a minnow bucket. We just started passing minnows around. It was <laughs> it was pretty fun uh, going down in, in the Red Bull and, and Jägermeister. So uh, I decided that I'd try and pull that off in the restaurant one day. And, and uh, once I got it built and got it open, we, we threw a aquarium in there and got the minnows in and. Went through a whole bunch of stuff with the health department and PETA and everything else, but uh, finally found a way around it all. And, and I go through about go through about 600 minnows a week for all three restaurants. Wow. wow. Do you ever have any specials on minnow shots? Well, the minnows are free, so any shot you want with the live minnow served next to it, and you have to drop them in yourself. Oh. Um, but, yeah, we do do drink specials all the time, happy hour and, and daily drink specials, and, and some brands are off on certain days, and, and things like that. So any shot you want, even even a you know tall glass of beer, if you want to drop a minnow in it, you have the right to do that. <laughs> have you ever minnow done that? Free. Have you ever done that? Uh, I think I've done eight in one day as my personal. Oh record. my god! Wow. Oh wow! But so, it was a long day. I, I wasn't you know and just pound eight shots all at once. It was our one of our grand openings. So hmm. um, you know, customer offers to buy the owner a shot and a minnow bomb, then obviously I'm, I'm obliged to participate okay so what tastes better vodka minnow or a beer minnow um you know the, the minnow really is tasteless you really can't tell it's just whatever shot you like <laughs> wow uh, that's amazing <laughs> would it have been a deal breaker if tiffany you know wouldn't do a minnow shot would that be a deal breaker for no, you no absolutely not <laughs> will that be a part of the, the uh, best would that be part she can of the? You do no wrong in my eyes. That's for sure. Aww. And your wedding ceremony uh, potentially coming up? Will you do uh, minnow bombs to celebrate? <laughs> you know what? They're, they're, I, absolutely. I, I don't see why not. You and I do a minnow bomb at the wedding, dear. I think I just committed this. You know what? While Deal. we have you, you on the phone, I want to ask you a question, and Tiffany could chime in too. A lot of the stuff on the show we're seeing, like you know, the girls going shooting. There's so many different. There, I, I don't know if it's a Texas thing or a cultural thing over there, but that's a, a question I have, and I'm sure fans from all over the country are wondering, like even the shooting down of her old car. Mm -hmm. Is that something you guys normally do? Sure. 
Those are like rituals I mean, in Texas? I, I taught Tiffany how to shoot off, off the back of the boat one day at the lake. I mean, we just found a couple of old ice chests and beer bottles on the beach and just started shooting at them. I mean, that's fun stuff. Wow. There's, there's a lot of places to go out and go shooting around here in Texas. And it's like normal to shoot down an old car? Yeah, that car was pretty much done. <laughs> that car was asking I for mean, it. Right. You know, we, 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 we had a way to dispose of the car without doing any damage to the environment or anything else. And, and you know, obviously had permission to, to destroy the thing. So, Tinker, uh, can you tell me what drew you to Tiffany? Pardon? What, like, what attracted, you know, what attracted Tiffany to what you? What attracted me to Tiffany? Yeah. She hated me. <gasps> really? really? This, is like, this is like Cheers, she, Sam and Diane stuff. Oh, totally. No, Good no. Call. It, she, she wouldn't even smile, wave, say hi, or do anything. I, I would walk by her and say hello and be friendly, and she would just keep walking and not even look at me. And there were two or three occasions where I actually went to one of my managers and I said, this girl needs to not work here. If she's that rude to customers as she is to me, she shouldn't even be at Redna Kevin. That's not what we're looking for. And I actually tried to get her fired a couple times. Wow. <laughs> and little and, did you, you know, know you'd be here in a few years. It, well, it, you know, it came to light later. She said, well, look, you know, everybody else was kissing your ass all day. I didn't feel that I needed to join that bandwagon. I wasn't there for you. I was, you know, I was there for other reasons. So when, uh, when we finally got to know each other a little bit more through a mutual friend, things, you know, she started to realize my two colors and her two colors and we started getting along and it was okay after that but yeah in the very beginning i, I was i was like okay who is this girl wow. <laughs> well you guys are clearly an awesome couple together and what i really like Thank you oh you're welcome and what i really like from talking with um tiffany earlier is that you two work really well together like business wise you kind of you go hand in hand oh my she's uh, she's my right hand she's great um she has not just with her schooling and, and, you know, graduating cum laude here in, in the next couple of weeks and, and done a great job with her college career, but the marketing department that she's created for the restaurant is just top notch. I, I couldn't pay someone with a master's degree with 20 years experience to do a better job than what she's done for, for the restaurant and how she's put this thing together. It, it's been amazing. Wow. It's an invaluable asset, even if she wasn't my girlfriend. That's a keeper. And sitting right next to you. Yeah. And sitting right next to me with an arm's reach. <laughs> I, okay, yep, I yep, have to yep. ask you a question about your house. Scott and I love your house. We think your house is um, awesome. I call it a panty dropper house. house. This is an amazing house. Yes, ma'am. Scott called it Batman. Um, so what, like, what drew you to this house? Like, you you have very good taste. So what, what went through your mind I, when I'm you so saw sorry. this? I'm so sorry. We need to wrap up this call right now. I'm so sorry. No, it's brand that's new. all right. You want to know what the one last house question. Was, was? We were in a house with a three-car garage, and I bought another car, so I needed a four-car garage. So we only looked at houses with four-car garages, and this was the first one we found, and we jumped right on it. Wow. It's wow. a great house. Well, thank you for sharing it with us and your all your MTV fans and viewers. Um, it was a pleasure talking to you guys. Please let everyone out there know where we can follow you at so they can click that button on Twitter. What's your at? Handle. I'm here. He's handing it back. Sorry. Redneck Heaven is on Twitter at RedneckHeaven01. And they're also on Instagram at Redneck underscore Heaven. And then I'm on Twitter at Tiffany Morgan and on Instagram at Tinkers underscore Bell. B E L B E L L E. Perfect. Well, thank you guys again. We appreciate it. Have a great night. We Thanks all we guys hope so you much. guys. It was so fun talking to you. Definitely. Yeah. Us too. Thank you. Blast. Thank you. Um, you guys, I hope you at home enjoyed the interview. Comment if you have questions for them. Also, tweet because they are very active on Twitter. They'll respond to you guys. Um, we can't be here all night, even though we'd love to be, but they have work to do. Um, MTV needs them. So, yeah, we will be back uh, next episode to recap, but maybe we can do, like, a little you know, tiny recap of like two minutes worth. I don't know, before yeah, we sign off. Yeah, let's do it. What did you guys think about tonight's episode? I mean, we did see... A lot of drama go down between, you know, Morgan and Kristen for the first time, which was kind of unexpected. Um, 
I don't know, it was interesting to see the girls in the bar having fun, Claire and Amber. We also saw the launch of Kristen's line. What was your favorite part of tonight's episode? I was surprised to see that Morgan and Kristen got into a fight because I thought they were unbreakable. And tonight mm-hmm. it just, I, I saw a side of Morgan that I did not like. Right. She didn't seem very nice. Yeah, it was unexpected. Uh, a very unexpected night. I guess, like Tiffany said, it, it's setting up a lot yeah. that we're going to see coming. But um, it was the return of Sloppy Kitty. Yes. Oh, which Well, it. it used to be Sexy Kitty. Oh, that's right. Now yes. it's oh, sloppy. sloppy Kitty. Sloppy Kitty, yes. Yeah. Um, she, <laughs> that Amber, in a, in a side story, had to, she first lost a bet where she had to do the, the high fives. And she can't handle that. She's OCD. I, I would never think that she is OCD. Like, I I don't know. I never would have pegged that. Yeah, I would figure most OCD, you know, you're obsessed and compulsed to keep your clothes on. But, you yes. know, that's yes. not necessarily the case for Amber. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, they got a little crazy as the night went it's, on for the launch party. Oh, good old Amber. Getting that's thrown my girl. Out by the owner of La Di Da, I would assume. La Di Da was like, La Di Da on out of here because, you know. When she pops up on camera, like, okay, you need it. We're done. You need we're done. To okay, because pretty we're much done. ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody <laughs> got time for that. That's why she got kicked out. But um, I wonder if that launch party was really boring and Amber was like, we got to spite this up, y'all. Cameras are here and everything, so I'll just get naked. I don't even think it's, like, boring. We need to spice this up. She will spice up any event if it's her and one other person. That is true. Mm-hmm. And you know? three drinks in her hand. Yes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, my, I mean, that was definitely my favorite part of the episode because it was the most fun. And I love parties. Who doesn't, right? But I would say what worried me the most about this episode was the issues between Morgan and her boyfriend, Chance. And you know what? You guys say you saw a different side of Morgan, but I saw a different side of Chance tonight. I've never seen him be this rude in public with, like, friends, you know, and with people that Morgan holds close. It was very strange, the whole five-star dinner situation where he got making comments about her friends and her friend's boyfriend. It was just so out of line and not tasteful at all. And not to mention that her best friend Kristen's telling her, you know, I don't really like Chance, and she even said it to us in the confessional, like, You know, I don't, it hurts me as a friend to see this girl keep getting back together with somebody that's not good for her. Yeah, because I liked Chance. I thought he was like, you know, I thought he was awesome. And now we're seeing this other side of him and I'm really disappointed. Yeah. It was qualities of his dad. Totally. That that unfiltered, it's coming out, I'm just going to say it and that's the way I feel about it, so deal with it. Right. That it wasn't is so even true. necessarily rude. I mean, at times I'm sure he could have just stopped it, but at other times he just said it. Yeah. You are so right, Scott. It kind of reminds me of when you're first getting to like know someone or you're first dating someone and everything's perfect and you're in the honeymoon phase. I feel like we as viewers are in the honeymoon phase because we just thought, oh, la, 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 like Chance and Morgan are perfect. They seem like the happiest couple. And then all of a sudden the demons come out and then we realize, <laughs> you know, What's the catch? And we we see that okay, clearly the father has influenced yeah. he is the way his Chance thinks. Son. Yeah, and I mean even the pressuring of don't you know wife up Morgan because she has this job and who wants to date a stripper? He's listening to his father's voice when he's talking to her. So and, and he is looking out for. Her. I mean he he does have his her best interests in heart. Right. Um, it's not the best way of going about it, and you know to be respectful of those are her friends, those are people that she knows. There's a good middle ground. They just haven't found it yet. Yeah. Uh, no, and, you know, it, it's funny because his dad is being so judgmental. But then again, in previous episodes, like, how old is his wife that he's with and his situation? It's like he's kind of being really preachy and judgmental. But yeah. maybe he should kind of take a look at his own relationship. Speaking about judging, I wanted to judge Mimi for her relationships with these jailbirds. Oh, my gosh. However, when we saw her go on the date, it seemed harmless, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't realize that Mimi had a thing for, like, jailbirds. Um, I, but, you know, it, that's it's, how... It's strange. Girls are into bad boys. I don't even get it. I'm so not. So bizarre. I'm not. So weird. Scott, are you a bad boy? No. Well, then you're I proving wish. everyone wrong because everyone loves you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, that's right. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I just, I just was surprised. I was surprised to hear that she liked um, jailbirds. But as we're getting to know her more in these episodes, it's not surprising me because I feel like there's a very hard exterior to her, and right. she throws punches. Yeah, it makes sense that she wants 
bad guys because she's yeah. a little, you know, feisty. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that could qualify as a date. What they did, like they just went out to a, a oh, baseball wait diamond, a and he was like, "Yo," yeah. uh, she like asked him, "Will you go out?" No, he asked no, her. No, he asked her. She said, "What does this mean?" Like we're together, and he said, "Will you go out with me?" Because she wanted him to ask her officially. When was the last time somebody asked you that? Probably like three boyfriends ago when I was in high school. Yeah, I was gonna say I think I was in like junior high, yeah. and that's like what you said to somebody as you were like walking down the hall together before you went to class. You were like, "Hey, Jen, you want to go out with me?" Okay, and then you're dating. Or like when iPhones <laughs> first came out, and someone texted, "Will you go out with me?" Because nobody likes to talk anymore over the phone. Right. Yeah, I it's such BS. <laughs> Come on, people. It's not how you ask someone to be with you. But no. you Tinker and Tiffany have a better story. Oh, Tinker and Tiffany are like... Sam and Diane. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are like Sam and Diane, and they are like a power couple. I, I agree. Them. I do have to say, like, it was really nice talking to them tonight, and to, to see the side that we never get to see while watching, you know? We don't really see them interact too much, mm -hmm. and we also don't see the storylines that, you know, side with Tiffany's end of the argument. Exactly, so, yeah. So it's refreshing. So watch the show and, and like it. Spread this interview around so that way people get that <laughs> side of, of Tiffany, you know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely think that you guys, if you have any friends that watch this show, you should pass along these interviews because it's always nice to hear you know, the whole story because there's always two sides, right? That's, That's right. right. But actually, in this case, it's three sides. It's you, me, and the producers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed. We love you. Um, we will be back next week again until the season is done. And like you heard, there's going to be a lot of crazy things to go down. So exciting. Yeah. Very excited. All right, you guys. Have a redneck heaven evening. Peace. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Minnow you, you later! later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.